Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a Diary of an Army Wife video. This is, I think, the first one that I'm doing on like a specific topic since I have told you guys that I am an army wife, not an army girlfriend. I've done like a QA and a and everything, which you guys can go check out right over here. If you haven't seen that video, I answer a whole bunch of you guys' questions, but this one is one that I've been asked a lot. Also, quickly before we get into it, if you are new here, welcome. I've got a whole series called Diary of an Army Girlfriend and I do a whole bunch of like fitness videos, perfume videos, vlogs a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lot of stuff on this channel, so make sure that you're subscribed here and find me on Instagram. I'm at Julie Jigsaw. I'm always on Instagram and I love to hang out with you guys all over the internet. But today's video is going to be on like, you got married, now what? I get that question all of the time, especially since I've said that I'm married. I get comments, DMs, messages, emails, everything. You guys are all asking me like, what do I do? We're married. What, what paperwork do I have to fill out? How complicated is it? I'm getting married in the military. I'm so scared. What do I do? If you get anything out of this video, it's don't worry about it. Most of it will be handled by your soldier. Granted, whenever I have answered a comment or message about my experience with deers, I've mentioned that I had a horrendous experience and I guess I can tell a little bit of a story time and then either have Sergio come over here and like help me out with the actuality of what has to get done with deers or he'll just tell me and I'll tell you guys I don't know if he wants to be on camera he probably doesn't he doesn't like to be on camera for my situation I'm gonna see if I still have like the vlogs that I was doing when I was going through my process of getting enrolled into Deers and everything. I don't know if I still have that footage, it's over a year old at this point. And part of it involved me having a meltdown because everything was going wrong and my anxiety took over and I started sobbing in the car because I just couldn't handle it. Also, since this was over a year ago at this point, my memory's a little bit shaky on the whole situation, but let's get into it, so. We got married in June and then we went on a little vacation and then he came back here to Bragg and then he got deployed. Since I wasn't living with him at Bragg and I wasn't here when he got back here, he did most of the paperwork on his own here. I had to send him my social security, my passport, and I think my birth certificate. And he had like all three forms of my identification going through the USPS and I was like, See you later identity, there goes everything that is me, it's all going to him. So he had all of my paperwork with him, he filled out everything, and then he sent it all back with a form that he had filled out, and all I had to do to go get my ID was go to the army post that was closest to me, which is Fort Hamilton in New York, which is the bane of my existence. I made an appointment at Fort Hamilton to get my military ID. And when we got married, I legally took his last name and I was going to change my name on my driver's license and my social security and my passport and everything after I got my military ID. But this is where everything started to go wrong. So he had filled out the paperwork with my new last name which in the end was fine. I just dealt with somebody who refused to believe that it was fine. So I made my appointment at Port Hamilton and I think it was like a month in advance. My appointment date finally came and I drove all the way down to Port Hamilton, which is like the last exit on the Belt Parkway in Brooklyn, which if you guys live in New York, you know, nobody wants to drive on the Belt Parkway, especially not during rush hour because my appointment was at like 9 a.m. or something and I had to go through all of the rush hour traffic on the Belt Parkway. I'm only going like eight miles and it took me two hours to get there. I finally get there and I have to go through the gate and I have to say, oh, I'm just, I'm here to get a military ID and they like take me to like an office and I have to fill out some paperwork in there. The usual like visitor pass stuff, but they were like weirdly more strict about it. I go to my appointment and the woman's like typing in my information and she's filling it all out. She's literally like scanning my IDs, making sure everything's good. And she's about to take my photo. Like she has done all of the paperwork. She finished it, she filed it, she's ready to go. All she has to do is take my photo and print out my ID and then I'm good. Like I'm already in Deers. Like at this point I'm already enrolled. I just need the card. Like. I'm already his dependent at this point. That's when she realizes that my name on all of my identification is still my maiden name and not my married name. She's like, oh, I can't make your military ID until your name is your name. I'm like, I literally have an appointment at the social security office and then I'm gonna go 
and get my passport and my driver's license like today like it's all happened like i scheduled my whole day around this is happening in the morning then i'm gonna go to social security and then i'm gonna go send in my passport and i'm gonna do my driver's license i'm doing it all you have my marriage license you can see it on the marriage license that i took the last name you can see my maiden name you can see that i'm changing my name like i'm me just print out my military id she's like no i can't and i'm like okay so what do i do like i don't want to wait another month to have to come back here like i want to get this done now like is there any way she wrote down her name and her personal phone number at the top of my like dear's paperwork she told me there was nothing she could do right now once i have my name changed in my documents like even after i get like little like receipts that say that i'm going to be getting the documents in the mail i can come back and i can do it then like she won't need an appointment i can just come back and see her I'm like okay so i leave i'm slightly disgruntled slightly upset i'm like well that was a waste of my morning and I go to the social security office and literally pulled up to the social security office that I was going to go to and they closed it indefinitely in front of my face. I watched the guy come out with a traffic cone, put it in front of the door and tape something to the door saying, closed until who knows. And I was like, wow, you've got to be kidding me. So then I drove all the way into another location in Queens and turns out they don't do that at that location either. And I think at that point, I was like, I'm done for the day. I'm gonna go tomorrow. I went the next day, I got my social security card. Either the same day or the next day, I went and I changed my driver's license. And guys, my driver's license photo is the best photo ever taken. I am never taking a new driver's license picture ever again in my life. Best photo ever. My military ID, completely different story. I look like I haven't slept in three weeks and haven't showered and it's it's weird because I look relatively decent in real life but I look horrible in that picture. I'll try to show you guys. I'll go get them at the end of this video and like show you how I look like two completely different people. I got my name changed on all my documents. I start calling this woman. She's not picking up the phone. And not only is she not picking up the phone, it's not her personal number. It's literally the number to their office in Fort Hamilton. It's and it doesn't pick up. And then I tried calling like other offices in Fort Hamilton like, "Hey, can somebody like forward me to them They're like oh yeah they never pick up the phone I'm like oh this is a thing they don't pick up the phone finally some guy picked up and he said no you can't just come in you need to have an appointment at this point i had already made a new appointment because i knew that like this was probably what's going on because i had been trying and trying and trying to call and no one's picking up whatever i'll make another appointment by the time that my second appointment came around i think it was like another month later i show up i go through the belt parkway again 8 a.m traffic takes me two hours to get there I get there, I have to go to the visitor center, do the thing, go to the office, and I walk in. I see the woman that I talked to last time, I go straight for her, and I'm like, hi, I have an appointment, I'm here to get my military ID. She takes all my forms again, she takes all my identification, and she looks at my form, and she tells me, oh, this expired, you need to get a new one. And I'm like, are you for real? What do you mean it's expired? How does this expire? She points at the bottom and it expired literally. I'm pretty sure it was like less than a week earlier. And this is when I started to have my like meltdown. I didn't cry in front of her, but I'm like, it expired less than a week ago. Can't you just like put last week's date on this form? I'm like, can't you just print out my ID? She's like, no, there's nothing I can do. It's expired. I can't lie to the system. I can't say that you were here last week. Why didn't you come back sooner? I'm like, I have been trying to call you over and over and over again and you didn't pick up and you didn't even give me your personal phone number you gave me this office number and nobody in this office picks up their phone so i don't know what you're talking about that i could have just come in she's like yeah you should have just come in like you should have called me I'm like i have i can show you on my phone that i have been trying to call you and you didn't pick up so i made another appointment and this was the soonest i could make an appointment and here i am and now you're telling me that the form is expired she's like oh can't you just have your husband make you a new one and i was like do you really think that if i could have had my husband do this he wouldn't be sitting right next to me right now. Like, I said this to her. I'm like, where do you think he is? Why do you think that I'm here in Fort Hamilton when all this paperwork is for Fort Bragg? Why do you think that his wife is in Fort Hamilton doing this all by herself? It's because he's deployed. Do you want me to have him just, you know, fax it over while he's over there deployed in a combat zone? You think it's that easy? Like, even though she's a civilian, she's working at an army post, she should know better. She thinks he can just like walk over, find someone else to like notarize the paperwork, fax it on over like it's no big deal, like he's not over in a war zone. This was the point where I just, I looked at her and I'm like, you're really saying there's nothing you can do right now? Like nothing. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. I'm like, not even, like, you could tell she wasn't sorry. She was almost like proud of herself for what she did to me. So I got up. And I left. I was so frustrated with the whole situation. And later on, it turns out since the paperwork was done, 
here with my new married last name, she should have just done it. There was no reason for her to not do it. She just didn't want to. She wanted to make my life impossible. There was no reason for her to not give me my ID. She just decided to make my life a little bit of a living hell. You know how they say that like when your soldiers deployed, everything goes wrong? Well, that's what it felt like. So after that happened, I had to tell Sergio that he needed to get me a new form. And obviously he was like, I'm deployed. Where do you think I'm gonna get that form? How do you think I'm gonna get it to you? Like, what do you think's gonna happen? I don't understand. And I got it. Like he was frustrated with me and I was frustrated with me because I should have done things a little bit sooner. Like if I had started doing everything sooner, I would have got it all done. Hopefully, maybe, who knows? I shouldn't have put off like changing my name until afterwards, I should have done that sooner. He was frustrated with me and I was frustrated with the lady and there was just all this frustration. And in the end, I ended up not getting my military ID until he came back from deployment. When I moved here, I still didn't have a military ID. Once he got here, we didn't even need to make an appointment because there's an office here that there's never a line to get anything done basically. And one day he had like a long lunch break and he texted me, he was like, put on some clothes, let's go get your ID. And he showed up 10 minutes later, picked me up, we went. We showed up at that office, sat for like five minutes waiting in line, like two people. We go in, the woman there types things up, takes the papers, whatever, and then tells me to smile at the camera and prints out my ID and we're done. Because he had done most of the paperwork already for me. I literally just needed somebody to do that. And that's it. And that woman refused. And unless you're unlucky like I am, it shouldn't be this much of a headache. Hey guys, it is another video from the past. It is currently August 3rd, I think it's the 3rd. And I am en route to go get my dependent ID card. It is ungodly how early in the morning I had to wake up just to go over one borough. The closest army post to my house here in New York is in Brooklyn, it's Fort Hamilton. And I woke up at seven, left by eight. It is currently 9.30 and I'm about like 10 to 15 minutes away. I had to stop to get myself some Starbucks because what else is new? It is delicious. I thought I would just vlog a little bit about going to go get my military ID. I mean, it's not really that exciting. I'm just getting identification. I do have to do it a little bit differently. I feel like I sound really weird right now. It's probably because it's so early in the morning and I barely slept, but I do have to do this a little bit differently than most people since we did get married and he got deployed like right away, like a few weeks later. Since he is not with me, he gave me a different form that he filled out and if any of you guys also get married and they get deployed and you have to figure this out on your own, I'm sure they will obviously do this for you because, you know, they should know. I'm going to go get that right now. I have the form that he filled out. I have his orders in case they don't believe that he's deployed. I've got our marriage certificate. I've got my birth certificate. I've got my passport. I've got my social security. I've got it all. I'm actually thinking going to the social security office after this and starting the name change process. If you guys didn't know, I did choose to change my name to his name and it's just going to be so complicated. And I do want to talk about this a little bit in a little while. Um, just the weird feeling that I've had about changing my last name, because it's a part of me, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna go do the dependent ID card thing first, I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then I'm going to possibly go to get my social security done. This car just got in my, oh, it's a US Army car. It's like a white van and he's in my way now and I can't get out of my spot. Honestly made this appointment seriously at least four weeks ago and I had to pick a very specific time to come. It was like you pick the date and then you pick a time slot and each time slot is like 10 to 20 minutes and I have 10 10 a.m. on August 3rd and I made the appointment I think before the 4th of July honestly like it's been a while so I'm glad that I'm finally doing this and I don't want to miss my appointment now so I'm gonna I need to get on the post they're probably gonna like search my car because I don't have an ID card yet. I'm like, hey, I'm here to get an ID card. Okay, update. I got here, I went through everything, I was in the office and they started the paperwork and then they told me that my name has to have already been changed on my social security and my license. 
No one told me this. No one said it online. I had no idea. I'm literally going to Social Security right after this, but that takes up to two weeks to come. I'm gonna be away when it comes, and then I need to go get my license, and that takes like two weeks to come. And I'm currently not so happy because I was set on getting this today, and now I can't, and I just, I spent two hours in traffic for nothing. But you know what? That's what the military life is like. Things just go wrong, and it was too good to be true for it to work out perfectly. So I'm gonna GPS myself to the closest social security office and start that. And then the next time you guys see me in this vlog will probably be like a month from now because nothing's gonna happen for a month. Bring your camera. I'm bringing my camera. Why? So Sergio doesn't want to be on camera, but he gets way more passionate and he's way more informed than I am about all of the things. So if you want to like hand me the form and I can like hold it up and you can be like this and that and this and that and this and that or like I'll just say which one it is. Right, I can't hold up the forms because I have all our information on it. <laughs> so the first thing that you should do is keep track of all your records and whenever they, you do something in the army there's always going to be a record of it. Which is basically your evidence. Can I show them how beautiful so, yours is without showing them anything? Every this time, is the little binder. It has all the information. Go on. Yeah, so every time that you do something in the military, you're going to have proof that you did it. Mm -hmm. It's like the picture didn't happen. I've heard them say that. So every <laughs> time that you do, that yes. Every time that you do something, you're going to have proof that it happened. But the best thing to do is to keep organized copies of all the stuff mm -hmm. that you ever get back from them because you'll be able to say exactly when and where you did something and you'll be able to prove it that you did it. This happens a lot in the military. You're going to be called upon to prove that you did something and you're going to want to have the proof. I've seen people not get paid BAS for 12 months and then have to go back and say, hey, you haven't paid me BAS for 12 months. And they're going to be like, well, prove it. And now they don't have anything. This is the form you sent me that was signed, right? That expired on me when I was doing the thing because I told them the whole story. About what is that? The application for identification card slash deer's enrollment. Yeah, that was that form. This is a form that it expired. It wasn't exactly that which form. Which is, yeah, because mine had a signature and a date. Yeah. So, DD form 1172-2 is the thing that if you have to do something on your own like I did, it'll be this form. And that's it. The rest, they take care of. So that's the same form that you do, that you use to put somebody into Deers. Mm -hmm. And usually at your Deers office, they'll do it for you, mm -hmm. like they'll fill it out with you as you can see most of that stuff is filled mm -hmm. in by computer. Mm -hmm. But that's the first step that you have to do when you get married is you have to enroll your spouse in Deers. Mm -hmm. so Which is what we'll, most of my people are asking about. They're yeah, like, the first thing that you have to do is go to the Deers office and enroll them in Deers. Mm -hmm. You'll need your marriage Which, certificate, birth certificate, and all their identification, driver's license, I've passport. I've my entire life through USPS. Birth certificate. The soldier only needs his own ID because he's already enrolled mm -hmm. in years, but the person will need everything else. But yeah, so this is the form. That's really all you guys are asking about, and you shouldn't have to do it on your own like I did. And then what's but this? Well, after you enroll the person in Deers, if the person is with you, they'll be able to apply for an identification card, and they'll use the exact same form to apply for an identification card because the form is... Application for identification card or Deers enrollment. So that's yeah. the first use of it is to apply for a, uh, an ID card. Now, if the spouse isn't with you, they can pre approve one of those. They'll fill it in for you and then give you like a start and an end date. And then you can give that form to your spouse, like if, say, if they're back in New York. I told them the whole story. They'll they be know. able to get their own ID card they without know. you being there. Unless, otherwise, unless it will, expired six days before you got your appointment, you know. But. Otherwise, it, it will, they will have to be with you to get their ID card. After you enroll the person in Deers, mm -hmm. not necessarily having to get an ID card, the next step that you can do is go to finance and you'll start your BAS and your BAH, which is your basic allowance for substance, Sustenance and housing. your basic allowance for housing, which is DA form fifty nine sixty. Yeah, and that's another one to keep a good track of because they lose that one all the time. I had while I was in Afghanistan, I had to produce copies of that form like four different times because cool. they would constantly stop my BAH. Like you can fill that one out mm -hmm. beforehand, 
but they'll pretty much just hand it to you and help you fill it out with them. Mm -hmm. It takes a couple of minutes. It's not a big deal. So once you uh, turn that in, they're going to stamp it and approve it, and then they're going to start your VAH and maybe yeah. your VAS if you're not already getting it. Is that the same as this pay inquiry one? Yeah. DA form 2142. So the pay inquiry was because I was married for 15 to 20 days already by the time that I enrolled you into Deers. Mm -hmm. So they start my VAH backdated to the day I, I got married. Is there anything else that is related to just getting married and the original paperwork that like a spouse would have to no. deal with? Well, that's it. You see how simple it is if you're not me? You see? Like there's just, there's just keep copies three of little pieces of paper here. Yeah, there's copies of them. They're all signed and everything. Is that all of this paperwork here? So yeah, that's the short answer. Keep all your papers. They do most of it for you. You just got to smile for a really bad ID picture in the end. That's it. And provide proof of who you are that you married your person with paperwork. The army's all about paperwork. Proof. Proof. Proof and paperwork. Proof. Just proof. Comment down below if he should stop being stupid and be in an actual video with me. He's sitting over here with his leave beard, shirtless, refusing <laughs> to be on camera. <laughs> Tell him that you love him and that you want him on camera, or how many likes should a video get for you to do this? He's thinking. Yeah, One million. <laughs> so there you guys have it. That is the closest to Sergio being on camera and talking to the camera that I have ever gotten. I don't. He's in a good mood. <laughs> I really didn't expect him to. I thought he was just gonna give me the papers and like tell me to talk about it myself. But make sure that you guys comment down below and say how awesome it was to hear him talk and then maybe we can convince him to like actually be in a video with me because I have like really fun video ideas that I would like him to be in, but like he doesn't wanna like be on camera, which I get, but like I don't get it because all I do is put my life on the internet and talk to cameras and pose for cameras. So like we're total opposites. Regardless, I hope that this video helped well, my story probably didn't calm anybody down. That was like stressful, but like hearing how simple it should be at the end, like I hope that calmed you guys down, made you realize it's no big deal. It's just a little bit of extra paperwork after you get married. Getting married is paperwork as it is and the military just adds a little bit more paperwork to get you an ID card and start your BAH and stuff. So no big deal, no worry about it. So on a positive ending note, after my trials and tribulations of just the bullshit that I went through last year that I didn't feel like talking about. Uh, I thought that I would show you guys the difference in what I look like in my dr new driver's license and my military ID. I saw this meme like a few weeks ago that there's no more humbling photo of you than the one that's on your military ID and I can agree, oh my god. So that's my driver's license and that's my military ID. Like how did they make me look so weird in the military ID. My hair looks flawless in my driver's license. My makeup was perfect. I just, I'm so proud of it. And then like the bags under my eyes, you can't even like see it on camera. Like, oh my God, I look crazy. Just, I look angry. I look, I have weird shadows under my eyes and like, ugh, I hate it, but you know, it's whatever. It's just an ID. <laughs> And honestly, whenever I go on post, it's usually just to go to the gym and I look roughly like that. So it's fine. Whenever I get carded, anywhere like i love pulling out my driver's license i'm so proud of it people practically don't even like check how old i am because they just go wow how'd you get such a nice photo on your id and i'm like i wish i could tell you how thank you guys so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it make sure you leave it a nice big thumbs up for me let's try to get to 1 million thumbs up and then maybe he'll actually be in a video with me <laughs> If you guys have any other questions, topics, suggestions for Milso related videos, make sure that you leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to keep up with you guys across all of my social media platforms. I always have links to them all in the description box down below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you totally should. I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!